Tomo News presents Discrimination. Thai cosmetic company runs controversial blackface ad. Just being white, you will win. Claims Thai cosmetic company sold secret in a new ad for a skin whitening pill called Snows. The ad features Chris Horwang, a Thai actress slash singer slash DJ slash white skin product promoter. If I stop taking care of myself, everything I have worked for, the whiteness I have invested in, may be lost. The 35-year-old model says as her face turns to dark black. Horwang goes on to say, a newcomer will replace me and turn me into a dark star. Skin whitening products stock the shelves of cosmetic stores all across Asia. And Horwang is no rookie to promoting the light skin trend. Soul Secret decided to pull the ad and apologized in a statement on Facebook where they said, Our company does not have any intention to convey discriminatory or racist messages. What do you think? Is Soul Secret the bad guy here? Or is the entire Asian beauty industry dripping with racist creams? How is the whitening trend any different than the Western world's obsession with tanning? Leave your thoughts in the comments. Dunkin' Donuts clerk mocks woman's Chinese accent. A Chinese-American woman has gone public with her experience of being racially harassed at a Dunkin' Donuts in Queens, New York. In a Facebook post, Pei Yun Shi writes that on May 30th, she walked into the coffee shop with her one-year-old son and nanny. When she asked for a glazed chocolate donut, the store clerk said he couldn't understand what she was saying and she'd have to read the whole name of the donut. She pointed again to the donut and he continued to play dumb. When she asked the clerk for his name to report the incident, he pointed to his name tag and asked, Do you know how to say it? Soon after, a customer walked in the store and joined in on the racist bully session, calling Payin an immigrant and threatening to throw her phone out the window. Payin made sure to snap pictures of both men before leaving. This is the mean customer who was harassing her. Payin posted her horrible experience to Dunkin' Donuts' Facebook page and the company was quick to get involved. Accounts of Sinophobia seem to be popping up more and more these days. This donut incident followed an attack just a few days earlier on two Chinese students for speaking Mandarin on an Arizona train. Delta staff refused to believe a black woman was really a doctor. A young black female doctor's Facebook post detailing an alleged case of discrimination during a mid-flight medical emergency is setting social media on fire this week. Tamika Cross claims she was flying to Houston from Detroit via Minneapolis aboard a Delta Airlines flight when an old man sitting two rows in front of her became unresponsive. Initially thought by airline staff to be a night terror, the man became unresponsive again and staff asked for help. That's when Tamika volunteered to help but was told by the airline attendant that she needed an actual physician. That same Delta attendant reportedly probed her for info, asking her for credentials, about her background, what she was doing in Detroit, all while a medical emergency was going on. But everything was cool when some white dude claiming to be a doctor showed up and helped the old guy. Well, it was cool for everyone, except Tamika. She was naturally pissed, and when the attendant asked for some advice later, Tamika says she still helped them out. Afterward, Tamika writes that the airline staff did apologize and tried to offer her free sky miles. But hey, even free miles won't cut it in cases of discrimination. Delta has since responded to the news by saying discrimination is unacceptable and they're investigating what went down. White woman angered by $1 bag fee cries discrimination. A crazy customer had a 45 minute meltdown at a Michael's craft store in Chicago the night before Thanksgiving and it was all caught on video. The woman was apparently triggered by an offer of a $1 reusable bag for her purchases and began shouting at the poor cashier. Jessie Grady, who was in the store with her daughter, heard the verbal tirade and took out her phone to record the woman, who then huffily announced that she'd voted for Trump. When the store manager tried to intervene, the crazy woman turned on her for not reprimanding the cashier, who she claimed screamed at her like an animal. Throughout her epic rant, the shopper repeatedly accused the two African-American employees of discriminating against her for being white and pro-Trump. Soon, her attention turned to the bystanders filming her, and she called Grady out for not siding with her as a fellow white woman. The woman repeatedly called the cops, though so did most of the other customers. She eventually left before authorities arrived. Grady's video was uploaded on YouTube and has since gotten more than 2 million views. 
She also made a GoFundMe page for the manager, who bore the brunt of the attack and needed a bit of holiday cheer. The page has since raised more than $19,000, well past its original goal of $400. Denver Bakery faces legal action for refusing to ice anti-gay cake. An award-winning pink Peruvian bakery in Denver has become the arena for a legal battle after its owner refused to write an anti-gay message on a Bible cake. I really think that I should be the one putting the complaint against him because uh, he, was, he has a very discriminated message. This is Marjorie Silva, the baker. She's up against Bill Jack, the evangelist, who claims Marjorie discriminated against his religion. Marjorie says Bill, whom she refused to call by name during the interview, came into Azucar Bakery in March of 2014 to order a Bible-shaped cake. And then with the flavor picked out and the plans all settled, Bill made a last-minute request. He wanted me to draw two male guys holding hands with an X on top. I haven't read the entire Bible, but I don't think God wants us to spread that message, truly. So Marjorie said no. Well, sort of. She offered to bake the Bible cake and give Bill the supplies to write his own message. But a dissatisfied Bill told Marjorie to talk to a lawyer and said that he would be back. And he wasn't kidding. He returned twice more that day. And then he came back a third time, and that's when we had to ask him to leave. Then in June, the Department of Regulatory Agencies informed Marjorie that Bill had filed a religious discrimination complaint, and they're still waiting for a verdict. In the meantime, Marjorie says that she's received lots of community support for her decision. I got flowers, I got people coming to shake my hand, they're treating me like I'm a superhero or something, <laughs> and I just did the right thing. Bill, who's a co-founder of the Christian youth camp Worldview Academy, is laying low. His one public statement explains he felt discriminated against, but that he doesn't wish to comment further until the DORA reaches a decision. Black woman put in the mental ward because cops didn't believe she could own a BMW. Camilla Brock, a 32-year-old woman from New York, is suing the city after she says she was a victim of racism and endured hell when she was forcibly sedated and sent to a mental ward for eight days back in 2014. Brock says that she was pulled over in 2014 for allegedly dancing in the seat of a moving vehicle instead of holding the wheel. Police accused her of being high on weed and although no drugs were found, her car was still towed anyway. Her interactions with police got even worse the next day, when she went to the precinct to pick up her car, except she mistakenly went to the wrong one. Brock's attorney says instead of helping her find her BMW, the cops didn't believe a black woman could own such a nice car and she was committed. At the mental ward, she was forcibly injected with sedatives. She woke up to people taking her clothes off, specifically her underwear, before passing out again. She says the personnel on the ward tried to make her deny that she owned a BMW and that she was a banker, even though she was telling the truth. They also wanted her to get over her delusion that Barack Obama followed her on Twitter, a claim they could have easily tested by checking her profile to see that, yes, he actually does follow Brock. Brock was billed $13,000 for her so-called treatment. She is now suing the city for unspecified damages and claims that she was the victim of racial discrimination. Men's Barbershop fine for not cutting women's hair. Barbershops, a time-honored, primarily male establishment where men can be men. But America being the land where anything goes, a Washington, Pennsylvania barber is being fined for refusing to cut a woman's hair. What? Whoa there, feminists! Please hold your proverbial horses and pitchforks. Men just need their own space sometimes, like women need theirs. Like curves, for example. In March, a woman named Diamond Pajak wanted a fade, so she booked appointments for herself and partner. But on arrival, the shop refused because they only do men's hair. The shop reportedly suggested some salons and offered to pay for her haircut as compensation. Note that the shop sign does say gentlemen's fine haircuts. Pajak complained to authorities, who later investigated and fined the shop 750 bucks for gender discrimination, which they paid. Does this seem harsh or unfair to you? Flight attendant allegedly refuses to give Muslim chaplain a dangerous soda can? A slew of Facebookers and tweeters say they're boycotting United Airlines after a flight attendant allegedly refused to give a Muslim chaplain a can of soda because she might use it as a weapon. 31-year-old Tahira Ahmad, who is the director of interfaith engagement at Northwestern University, shared her experience on Facebook Friday night. She says she was flying from Chicago to Washington for a religious peace conference. 
She asked the flight attendant for an unopened can of Diet Coke for hygienic reasons. The woman said no and explained to Tahera that unopened soda cans could be used as weapons. But then the flight attendant proceeded to hand the man next to Tahera an unopened beer can. When Tahera protested, the flight attendant quickly opened the man's beer can and reiterated the so-called policy. Tahera says she expected someone on the flight to speak up on her behalf, but the only response was from a man who got up and told her, you Muslim, you need to shut the f up. Tahera says she was in tears after the incident. On Saturday evening, United Airlines released a statement saying the whole thing was a misunderstanding and that the flight attendant had tried to accommodate Tahera. But the chaplain says the statement disappointed her. What do you think? Was the flight attendant discriminating against her? Leave your thoughts in the comments. If you're white, don't bother applying for a job at Tata Consultancy in America. If you want to work at Tata Consultancy in the United States, it pays to be the right color. A lawsuit filed by American IT worker Stephen Helt accuses Tata of discriminating against Americans in favor of South Asian employees. Americans are simply not hired, and if they are, they're treated as second class. Those South Asians are just 2% of the U.S. population. They constitute 95% of Tata's 14,000 member workforce in America. In his lawsuit, Stephen Helt said he was benched for 13 months, while his South Asian counterparts were assigned work. He was eventually sent to Kentucky, but given the menial task of signing for deliveries in the lobby. Health attempted to apply for jobs in other departments, but was told opportunities for transfers were available only to Indian workers. He also claims an HR manager denied his relocation expenses and outright told him, this is why I don't like working with Americans. Tata prefers H-1B visa hires to Americans because Tata can overwork them and pay them less. In 2013, Tata brought 8,700 H-1B visa workers into the United States. The cheap imported labor is how Tata can boost profits. Do you think Tata discriminates against Americans? Or is Tata so crappy a company that only South Asians will work there? Leave your thoughts in the comments. Baltimore County Community College rejects man's application because he mentioned God in the interview. Back in 2013, Maryland man Brandon Jenkins had the reasonable goal of attending community college to become a radiation therapy technician. He applied to the Community College of Baltimore County for the fall 2013 semester. Jenkins got the maximum score during his period of observation, making him competitive for one of the 24 spots. But when the interviewer asked, what's the most important thing to you, he replied, my God. Wrong answer, apparently. Weeks later, Jenkins was informed he'd been rejected. When he asked why, program director Adrian Doherty said it was because he mentioned God in the interview. Now that is a wrong answer. Jenkins and lawyers from the ACLJ have filed a discrimination suit against the community college. Although Director Doherty cited other reasons why Jenkins was rejected in her email, such as a 10-year-old theft and drug charge, specifying somebody's faith as a reason to reject them kind of runs afoul of the First Amendment. Yeah, maybe Doherty should go back to community college.